Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Concord, Massachusetts. That's right. After spending the last two weeks in New York City, we decided to slow it down and take it a little easier by coming up to the historic city of Concord. And this morning, we ventured out into the Minuteman National Historical Site to follow the battle road from uh, Upper Lexington through Concord to see some of the great historic sites of the Revolutionary War. Exciting, let's go. <laughs> we are Crystal and Terry, and we've always loved to travel. However, the high demands of our full-time jobs make it increasingly difficult to take any time off. So, we're giving it all up. For the next year of our life, we'll be dedicating ourselves to full-time travel. We're so excited about this next chapter, and we really hope you'll join us in this amazing adventure as we leave the life we've always known to live the life of our dreams. Come on. I mean, if you're a nature person, you've got this beautiful historical park where you can bike or jog or hike around and enjoy the beauty of our country. But all along the way, restored colonial landscaping and, and architecture and placards and rangers who not only are going to let you enjoy the beauty of our country, but also tell you how our country got started. It's the best of both worlds. So an exciting part about being up here is knowing that so much of this occurred on the grounds that we're walking around. Something that a lot of people may not know, a lot of people know the name of Paul Revere. Uh, people know that Paul Revere warned the colonists of the British invasion, but he wasn't alone in that venture. He actually rolled off with a man named William Dawes, and uh, they went around Boston up to Lexington and were heading to Concord when they ran into another patriot named Samuel Prescott. Uh, the three of them were going to head out to Concord to warn the colonists out here of the British invasion, but they soon encountered some British troops. And they split and went three different directions. Revere was captured and questioned. Uh, Dawes got thrown from his horse and had to walk back to Lexington. And Prescott, a Concord native, was the only one that knew his way around the woods and the trails to make it to Concord to warn everybody of the impending British invasion. Uh, there's also two other people, Israel Bissell and... Uh, Sybil Luddington, a 16-year-old girl. They also toured around and uh, rode around to warn people of the British invasion, but they're not remembered that much, even though Bissell rode over 300 miles compared to Paul Revere's 20 miles. And Sybil Luddington, a 16-year-old girl in Connecticut, rode over 40 miles warning the militias in the, the Danbury, Connecticut area. But they weren't remembered in the poem like Revere, so most people don't remember them. But you can look them up and study about them if you wish. on what I was saying earlier about how five people uh, made the journey to warn the colonists of British invasion but only Revere's remembered because of a poem. Uh, in 1861 an author and poet named Henry Wadsworth Longfellow he writes the poem Paul Revere's Ride 
because in 61, this country was about to go into civil war. And he wants to try to unify people to remember a time when we were all working together for our country. He had been to the Old North Church and he was inspired by what had happened. So he writes the poem, you know, listen, my children, you shall hear of the midnight ride of Paul Revere and on and on. I don't know the whole poem. But of course, it, uh, it starts being recited as poetry as well as history throughout our schools from 1861 forward and therefore is all that we remember because well poetry is like you know it was rap music of the day so it was easy for everyone to remember and everyone remembers Paul Revere uh, that's why they don't remember the other people because their name didn't work in the poem so there you go there you go <laughs> so we finished about half of the trail today which is five miles long. Um, so we did a little ways up and a little ways back. And the great thing about this trail is that it's got um, parking spots all along the way. So you don't actually have to hike the whole thing and then hike the whole way back. You can hike portions of it and then drive to the next portion. So we're gonna stop for lunch at Love at First Bite, which is a Thai restaurant before we head up to the second part of the trail. What is that? The North Bridge. The North Bridge. So, we'll see you there. got the Tom Ka soup and it's basically like a coconut soup with a little bit of chicken, onions, and mushrooms. There's supposed to be some mushrooms in there. I think they it kind of looks the same as the chicken, but I'm pretty sure that's a mushroom. <laughs> anyway, let me take a bite. Mm. It's warm and coconutty but not too sweet, because I don't like too sweet. So it's got a little bit of like a citrusy flavor and I like it. So I have the Hawaiian fried rice. It's filled with uh, curry powder, uh, onions, pineapple and shrimp along with uh, a jasmine uh, fried rice it's got a nice pineapple flavor throughout um, and I like it I like it a lot not to mention the presentation is pretty impressive well we finished our lunch at love at first bite Thai restaurant and the food was really good we've noticed that in the Northeast, people seem to like to put flowers on their dishes. They don't taste like anything, but they definitely make it pretty. So <laughs> I'm not sure what that's all about, but we like the flowers. They add a little bit of color. So that's kind of cool. Anyway, we're going to head up to the North Bridge now and do the second half of the Battle Trail. Here we go. talking and Crystal said maybe I should explain what a Minuteman is and it was really just a military designation at that time uh, every colony village had a local militia and the militia not necessarily part of the Continental Army Minutemen were men who had volunteered to be ready to go into action to defend against any invader at a minute's notice they had to be ready at all time probably most likely 
their pellets, their armament, their musket were waiting at the door whenever they were called upon and they would grab what was needed and take off to defend their colony, their village, their town. This is the statue that commemorates the battle that took place here at the North Bridge that started off in April of 1775, which was the start of the Revolutionary War. And you know, a lot of people, just to clear up, might think that the Revolutionary War ended in 1776 when we signed the Declaration of Independence up in Philadelphia, but actually the war raged on from 1775 to at least November of 1782, and the Paris uh, Treaty, which was the official ending of the war between Britain and the colonies, uh, was signed in 1783. So it took about eight years to officially end the war and allow us our independence from Britain. Just a little something you might not know. Hello everyone. We have come today to the De Cordova Sculpture Park and Museum. It's about 20 miles outside of Boston and I'm not ever going to exclaim that I am some sort of an art critic or expert, but uh, these sculptures and these works of art are placed throughout this park in sort of an unusual situation, you know, art interacting with nature. And it was very interesting, it was highly rated, and it's a way to enjoy the outdoors while taking in some of these artists' works and inspirations. So that's what we're doing today. We're gonna to bring you along and see what you think about some of this art work. like people have gone ahead and built their own sculptures so I'm gonna join in I'm gonna build a Karen and Terry asked what's a Karen and I said well it's a rock sculpture that hikers use to help them find their way on the trail because it's a sculpture that does not occur in nature so it's basically just rock stock stacked on top of rock I've never done this so we'll see how it goes I thought I was being all cool building my Karen over there on the sand. Look at this. That is talent right there. Holy cow. because the rooftop has all the great views. But there's like a million stairs to get up here, so we're a little out of breath. But that leads me into the views are breathtaking. Uh -huh. oh, man. <laughs> So it's much 
much as I appreciate history and all the great historical landmarks that Terry has taken me to, sometimes a girl just needs to go shopping. shop which I love cheese and crackers sometimes we just have cheese and crackers for dinner so I got a typical manchego it's kind of a harder sharper cheese and it's one of my favorites and then I asked for a recommendation for something similar but something I'd probably never tried and she gave me a thres leches cheese which means three milks so they use three different kind of milks to make this and I read on the sign that what gives it different flavor is they rub it with olive oil during its maturing phase. So we'll see how that one tastes later. And then a dry sausage. And this sausage is actually local, so it's made in Wilhelm, Massachusetts. So get to try something local today. There you go. Well, I definitely enjoyed my time downtown going through all the cute little shops. Everything was really cute and everybody was very, very friendly. And we had a nice little lunch um, at the Main Street Marketplace. So we enjoyed that and have just really loved the town of Concord. So Concord and Lexington are pretty close together and they're both just really cute, small, historic towns. And then there are larger cities in the area to get all your modern day conveniences. But this has been a perfect trip. I really like it out here. There's a bug on the lens. So I know, no, I don't know. <laughs> I thought it was cute. <laughs> 